it is highly contagious even when a person has passed away. So if it really is very contagious in that Baby, you can call me a superman. Chacho, 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 Hey yo, what's up everybody, welcome back to our channel, it's your boy Jesse Keegan and we are Funny and Jesse, so right about now we're going to do another reaction video but before we get into the reaction guys, I want to thank everybody out there who's been subscribing to our channel you guys are really really amazing and I hope that you're taking care of yourself um, you're washing your hands, you're staying indoors you are actually um, sanitizing yourself, very very important and yeah, and also um, I want to thank the the people who have been giving us reaction videos you guys are amazing thank you for the suggestions and also you want to thank the people who've been commenting on the comment section below you know they are good people who are giving us you know informative um information and whatnot and then no these uh, other people who are actually giving out just any kind of comments which are not really pleasing but anyway we will all which are not that pleasing but in regard to that we'll always move forward so um right about now we're gonna do another reaction video this one was suggested by a lot of people they suggested that we should go react to muslim should never do this it is a wrong so without any further ado guys let's get it my brothers and sisters there is a very very serious discussion that is happening among the scholars of islam and even the public regarding the way of bathing and shrouding and burying a patient who has passed away with the coronavirus COVID-19. I want to highlight something very interesting. Let's not talk about COVID for a moment. Ordinarily, when a Muslim is to pass away, it is the duty of those who remain to bathe the body, to then enshroud it with white pieces of cloth, and then to pray something known as Salatul Janazah and thereafter to bury the body in the closest Muslim cemetery. So those are, in a nutshell, the rights that we owe the deceased from amongst us. Islam does teach us that if a person were to be killed or if a person were to die having been shot or wounded by someone in a specific way, and I'm not going to go into the details of the conditions but under certain circumstances and conditions the bathing is waived and the shrouding is waived they, they would just be the prayer and the burial so that person is considered shaheed or a martyr that is when someone is killed or when someone was murdered etc and like i said with certain circumstances and conditions let's talk about covid19 now it depends how much we know about the contamination that can be caused by the deceased. Remember, this is something evolving. Even the medical experts are not absolutely certain as to what happens and whether or not it can contaminate those who are alive and to what degree it can contaminate them. So, number one is cremation in Islam is considered totally prohibited. It is considered blasphemous. It is wrong. It is disrespectful. And it is something that must be avoided at any and every cost. That is the issue of cremation. So as Muslims, we believe we're not allowed to cremate. It is against the honor of humankind. We believe humankind was created from the soil or dust and should be returned into the soil or dust. In the grave, there is a portion that is left blank or open, just filled with oxygen in order to help the decomposure of that particular body back into the soil. The Quran speaks about it in Surah Taha. مِنْهَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى We have created you from the soil. We have actually uh, we will return you into it and we will resurrect you from it once again. So, cremation should be avoided as far as possible. Then, what we need to know is, sometimes, some of those experts are saying that it is highly contagious even when a person has passed away. 
So if it really is very contagious, in that particular case, there is permissibility to waive the bathing and the enshrouding. So rather, we would be disinfecting the body within the hospital, or the medical experts can do that, and they can place it in a body bag or two or three and hand it over to the Muslims to bury or supervise the burial with strict conditions if it is proven that that is highly infectious. If it is proven that it is not as infectious as they are claiming, which a lot of people are saying now, and I, I'm not an expert, I'm not claiming to know that, but it depends on how much is proven. So if it is proven that it is not as infectious as they are saying it is, or that it can be handled with protective clothing, then people should wear the protective clothing uh, to the best of their abilities and try to fulfill the maximum number of rights that need to be fulfilled as a Muslim for this particular deceased person of COVID-19 or coronavirus. So let's remember this, we should try to do whatever we can do, the maximum, without causing harm to others or putting others' lives in danger. So if it is proven that lives are in danger and it is highly infectious to the degree that it would not be recommended at all to enshroud or to bathe, then we can waive the bathing and the enshrouding. But we will continue with the prayer and the burial. But like I said, if it is proven that it is not as infectious or that if we were to wear the protective clothing and then continue with whatever we have to, then we should do that. May Allah make it easy for us. So like I'm saying, there is not, uh, meaning there is no specific ruling because this is a matter that is still evolving. We're still learning more about it. But I really believe that we should avoid cremation as far as possible. Like I said, it is totally disrespectful in Islam to cremate someone. Secondly, we must make sure that we do whatever we can, taking every precaution. And only if it is proven or if it is said to be highly infectious and contagious, even after death, to the degree that it is not recommended at all to do the bathing and the enshrouding, in that particular case, we will suffice with the prayer and we will suffice with the burial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. People are also asking, how do we fulfill Salatul Janaza? Salatul Janaza is the prayer that is done for the deceased. Now, as we do know, some schools of thought allow a prayer in absentia. So the person may not be there and they are praying. Other schools do not allow that. So under these circumstances, if you really cannot go to pray for the person because they've limited the numbers, you have one of two options. Either you pray in absentia, which could be permissible, although you are practicing upon the school of thought of another, because obviously it is also derived from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and on an occasion like this or circumstances of this nature, it would be permissible to practice upon that. But if someone feels that they do not agree with that school of thought, then at least pray for them, because one of the biggest gifts you can ever give a person who's passed away when it comes to Muslims and Islam is to simply pray for their forgiveness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness. I thought this was a very short but very, very important uh, piece of information uh, that I would have, that I wanted to actually convey to all of you. May Allah protect us all, grant us cure, and may Allah help us to be able to uh, reach out to one another and help us to fulfill the rights of one another even after one has passed away to the best of our ability aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wow such an amazing message over here there's a lot of things i didn't know such an informative video and a good one too i really uh, learned a lot of things <laughs> like um uh, Muslims are not allowed to cremate and I guess uh, when someone dies uh, through maybe killing and all those um, killing and 
maybe being shot or maybe in, a, in an accident or something like that um, they don't like uh, clean the body or wash the body something so they just bury it like that and I think they should bury the body in 24 hours or something wow this is amazing uh, really really uh, good informative such an informative video I've watched for uh, like it's been a minute I've not watched an informative video like this one it's things that I didn't know now that I know it's really really amazing and hope everybody has actually gotten what me uh, Mufti Menko is saying about um, what is around uh, especially when it comes to cremation yeah the, I think the only religion that allow cremation is uh, is it Buddhism or, or Indians Indians they do cremate I think yeah Christians they don't cremate Christians they bury but uh, like they don't bury the way the Muslims do it I think Christians they do more of um, uh, what do you call this you uh, you put in a coffin and stuff like that and then your body can stay in the morgue for like even a few days weeks depending on uh, how the burial arrangement is is a uh, is being uh, done or something like that yeah so a very very informative video and I really want to thank the people who've been giving us this suggestion over here particularly amazing if you feel like I reacted to this video in a better way just give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down in the comment section and tell me exactly what you feel about my reaction and what you feel about this video if you feel like you've gotten something out of this video just give us a thumbs up and also go down in the comment section below and tell us anything and also don't forget to give us reaction videos if you have any kind of reaction videos any type just let us know in the comment section below and we're gonna do it for you and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more we keep on subscribing the more we give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better better content and last but not the least we're gonna or rather we're gonna see you in the next video and peace out